Hello, all you free thinkers. J.R. Dukes here. Appreciate you joining me. And here is what's on my mind today. To start off with, we're going to talk about the ongoing Israeli Gaza war that is about to rage even more so very soon. The first thing you need to know is it looks like it's really about to get bad over in the Middle East. It is a powder keg waiting to go off. Let me show you if I can on this map behind me here. Right about here is Israel, and right where my finger is is what's called the West Bank or the Occupied Territory, depending on what side you're on. Up here in the north is Lebanon, and right over here, this little strip of land is what we call the Gaza Strip. Right now, the war is between Israel and Hamas which rules this little piece of property, if you will, the Gaza Strip. And just for reference, right down here is the country of Egypt. The border crossing between Egypt and the Gaza Strip is currently still closed. So what's happening? You have up here Lebanon, and you have these folks, Hamas and Gaza, under the control of the country of Iran. Iran is using these two countries, these two ruling governments, basically as proxies. They have a proxy war going on between Iran, Israel, and de facto the United States because we support Israel as we should support Israel and their people. They were in this land first. This land was given to them by God himself many, many years ago. Right now, you have Israel obviously preparing for a ground invasion of Gaza. You're aware by now of the terrible terrorist attack that Israel suffered at the hands of Hamas. They came over from the Gaza Strip. They raided these towns very close to the Gaza Strip, and they essentially went in there and killed almost everyone. They took approximately 200 individuals back from many different nationalities as hostages. At this point, Israel is amassing a huge amount of military hardware at the border between Israel and Gaza. Again, somewhere in here, they are getting all the tanks, all the people together. I believe they have mobilized something around 330,000 troops in Israel, and they're preparing for this imminent ground invasion that's about to happen. At this time, Israel has been dropping leaflets all in the northern section of this strip right here, telling the civilians in this area to head south over here, if you can see where my finger's at right there. Israel has been very patient, and they're giving the citizens, the civilians, if you will, time to get south. At the same time, Israel is amassing this huge amount of military so that they can invade at the appropriate time. Now, Hamas is under the gun, obviously, as far as the Gaza Strip is concerned. And up here in Lebanon, you have the Hezbollah individuals. Now, Hezbollah, as I've told you before in other videos, is no joke. Hezbollah is the real deal. Hezbollah can definitely give the IDF, which is the military for Israel, a good run for their money, so to speak, which is extremely scary. Reports say there are approximately 150,000 Iranian missiles that are at the behest of Hezbollah should they choose to use them. Now, what I think is going on here is you have Israel preparing to invade the Gaza Strip, and I believe what they're going to do is wait until Israel actually enters Gaza, which of course will be the weakest moment, if you will, for Israel, because they'll be thinking of Gaza and focusing their troops on that area. At that point, you're probably going to have Iran authorize their proxy, Hezbollah, up in Lebanon, and go ahead and invade Israel at that time. That's what I would do. That would be their best bet if they want to put the hurt on Israel, so to speak. Now, to counter this, you have the U.S. wisely sending a large military contingent to the Mediterranean. Currently, there is one aircraft carrier fleet there now, and they're sending an entire other battalion, another fleet to the Mediterranean right now. Once they get everything in position, 
the Americans will be able to essentially conduct war 24 hours a day as flying Saudis over this particular area. That's a lot of firepower in a concentrated area. I am really concerned that this is about to blow up into a regional war, if not a world war. I definitely hope that I'm wrong, but I'm telling you all the elements are in place right there. Also, this coming Wednesday, our President Joe Biden is scheduled to go to Israel at the invitation of their prime minister and meet with their prime minister. I hope that President Biden is not there to essentially school the prime minister of Israel and tell him, hey, you have to be careful of these civilians. You you need to go slow. You need to whatever. I, I am very fearful that if not already, very soon, you're going to have a lot of the European Union, if not our own president, trying to really put pressure on Israel to hold back and not put an end to Hamas. This cannot be allowed. Hamas really made a bad mistake with what they did. Not only was this extremely grotesque, nothing has been seen like this on this earth since the Holocaust. This is something that is nothing but pure evil. It must be extinguished from the face of the earth. And I believe Israel is going to do just that. Now, you may have heard there's a lot of people saying, hey, why is Israel taking so long to enter Gaza? Well, the reason for that is very simple. They have the advantage right now. They're in no rush. They are taking their time. They're sending drones all over the place, trying to get intelligence, trying to figure out where the hostages are, trying to figure out where Hamas is essentially buried in their tunnels. They have to be very careful because once Israel enters the Gaza Strip, Basically, you're going to have things a lot more equal, if you will. When it comes to global warfare, when it comes to urban warfare, street by street, things can get very, very dangerous and very deadly quickly. Published reports have it that the Hamas leadership has for a long time been building up weapons that they have purchased directly from Russia. This has not widely been reported in the legacy media. However, some of the munitions that they have bought allegedly are of such caliber that they can literally wait until Israel brings a substantial amount of troops over into the Gaza Strip. Then Hamas can detonate these munitions and they just won't blow up. They will blow up entire blocks at a time. So there are a lot of perils, a lot of danger that the Israeli military will face when they obviously eventually go into the Gaza Strip. We'll just have to wait and see. I personally hope that Israel, that their leaders, that their generals are actually planning for a two-front war. They might as well because it looks absolutely imminent that that's exactly what's going to happen. They need to make sure that they are not surprised Hezbollah will attack from the north. I can only assume that they already know this and that they're making plans accordingly. I want to talk for a minute about the hostage issue. It is extremely sad that there are so many hostages in possession of Hamas. The reality is this, and it pains me to have to say this, but unfortunately, my opinion is those hostages are dead. They are dead people walking, if you will. I think Israel has no choice. They cannot act at this time on behalf of those hostages. They have to go ahead and eliminate Hamas. That has to be their first priority. And unfortunately, unless the Israeli military, their intelligence knows exactly where the hostages are, there's probably very little hope that they're going to be recovered alive. Again, I hope I'm wrong on this, but I know for a fact that Israel is focused like a laser beam on eliminating Hamas once and for all. Unfortunately, the hostages are individuals that were basically killed at the time they were taken captive. Obviously, I hope I'm wrong, but that's the way I see things. I want to be clear that the government and people of Israel have come together. They have put aside their petty political differences. I was watching an interview the other day where one of the top officials in the Israeli government was asked a question from one of the American reporters. He was asking him, what about all the protests? What about all the political division? And this 
particular leader said, hey, enough of this. We are at war. We are singularly focused on eliminating Hamas. It was just very shocking to me how clear he was. They don't care anything about politics right now. They are focused on eliminating Hamas from the face of the earth as they should be. We are a very blessed people here in the United States and we have the luxury of fighting between ourselves. We have the luxury of fighting over the Speaker of the House or Donald Trump or Joe Biden or whatever is going on. Over in Israel, it's literally a fight for life and death. It's literally a fight for the Israeli people to continue versus being extinguished from the face of the earth. So join me in praying for Israel. Join me for wishing Israel well. This is the way I see things right now, and this is exactly what you need to know in order to be informed as to what's going on right now. It's always my pleasure for you to take a moment and join me so that you can hear what I have to say. If you agree with my comments, let me know. Leave a comment below. If you disagree, that's fine too. Tell me why I'm wrong. Just leave it in the comments below. I generally respond to each and every one of my comments. I definitely appreciate you taking time and joining me today. As always, I want you to always continue to have that free mind and never give up, my friends. Until next time, I am J.R. Dukes.